Okay, so basically, uh, this mTOR complex 1, or this mTORC 1, uh, this is going to carry out the function of um, actually activating the uh, division of the cell, basically. It's what's going to take the cell from being in interphase of the cell cycle to being in G1 phase of the cell cycle. Okay, so somehow we need to get uh, this protein AKT, or protein kinase B, to activate mTOR. And the way it's done is uh, through another protein complex known as the TSC, T, uh, TSC1 slash TSC2 complex. Okay, so let me show you these two. All right, so let's have down up here this TSC2, and then next to it, uh, we'll have this protein TSC1. So this is known as the TSC1 and uh, TSC2 uh, complex, basically. And uh, TSC uh, stands for tuberous sclerosis complex. Okay, so where should I write this? Um, so uh, I want it nearby, so let's, let's put it up here. So TSC stands for tuberous sclerosis complex. So this is the tuberous sclerosis complex. So TSC1 is the tuberous sclerosis complex protein 1, and the TSC2 is the tuberous sclerosis complex uh, 2, uh, protein 2. So together they make up the tuberous sclerosis complex. All right, so let's uh, color in the important one, which is TSC2. Now, basically, when TSC2 is in this complex with TSC1, it's an active GTPase. So this enzyme here is an active GTPase, which means that it breaks GTP down into GDP and inorganic phosphate. Okay, and specifically, uh, it acts on a protein known as a REB. So that's, where can I draw this now? We're going to have to skip down to here. Okay, so let me redraw the tuberous sclerosis complex. So here is our tuberous sclerosis complex protein 2. And here is our tuberous sclerosis complex uh, protein 1, so TSC1. And basically, let me just colour in TSC2. Uh, it's the most important one. TSC2 is the important one, but TSC1 is needed to activate the TSC2. And basically what it does is it takes in this protein known as a REB, uh, which has GTP bound to it. So this is Reb protein here. And Reb protein has GTP bound to it, okay, usually. And uh, when t uh, the tuberous sclerosis complex protein 2 uh, is bound to the tuberous sclerosis complex protein 1, i.e. when it's in the tuberous sclerosis complex, it takes in this Reb GTP and hydrolyzes that GTP to GDP and inorganic phosphate. So basically what happens is that REB ends up bound instead to GDP, okay? Now, uh, when uh, protein kinase um, B becomes active, or this AKT enzyme becomes active, so we're going right back to our pathway now, so it's, it's become active by uh, the growth factor binding to the growth factor receptor. Basically, what uh, AKT, or protein kinase B, does is it adds a phosphate group onto the TSC2 protein, okay? So it adds this phosphate group. Now, what happens when you add that phosphate group onto the TSC2 is that another protein comes and interacts with the TSC2. And uh, that protein is known as the uh, 1433 protein. So where am I going to draw this? Okay, so I'll draw it down here. So we've now added this phosphate group onto TSC2, and I think I'll draw the phosphate group over here instead, actually. So here's our phosphate group, and here is TSC2. And basically what happens is another protein now comes and interacts with this TSC2 now that it's got this phosphate group on. And I'm deliberately drawing it in this convoluted manner uh, because it will help. So this is this 1433 uh, protein, which God only knows how it got named that. Um, so this is this 1433 protein here. And 1433 comes and associates with the TSC2. And basically when it does so, it stops the TSC2 from being able to bind to the TSC1. So TSC1 goes off. Now, 
uh, the tuberous sclerosis complex has broken down, basically. The, um, the friendship is over. And now, when the tuberous sclerosis complex protein 2 no longer has its buddy, the tuberous sclerosis complex 1, it no longer does this reaction. So, it stops converting REB-GTP into REB-GDP. So, the overall effect is that REB-GTP goes, excuse me, up in the cytoplasm of the cell. So let me repeat that because it's worth repeating. So uh, the protein kinase B here has become activated by having a phosphate group added to it by this phosphoinositide dependent kinase 1. It's then going to phosphorylate the tuberous sclerosis complex protein 2. When tuberous sclerosis complex 2 gets phosphorylated, this other protein, which I forgot to label, which is the 14 free free protein. Uh, this comes and associates with the tuberous sclerosis complex 2 and basically pushes the tuberous sclerosis complex protein 1 off. So this one goes off. Now, when the tuberous sclerosis complex pro um, protein 2 doesn't have tuberous sclerosis complex protein 1 bound to it anymore, it is not any more capable of catalyzing this reaction where it breaks down the uh, GTP into GDP and inorganic phosphate. So it loses its GTPase activity. So that means that Reb GTP is spared, basically. It's not going to have its GTP broken down anymore. So Reb GTP goes up in the cytoplasm. And Reb GTP, by unknown mechanisms, activates the mTORC1, um, basically, the mammalian or mechanistic target of rapamycin complex 1. So it activates this whole uh, big thing here. Okay, in addition, that's one of the mechanisms by which protein kinase B activates uh, mTOR uh, complex 1. Uh, another way that is known that it activates mTOR complex 1 is that it also phosphorylates this PRAS40 protein. So um, it's also going to stick a phosphate group on here. So this is the work of AKT, protein kinase B. One way that it has activated mTORC is by raising the levels of REB GTP. Another way is that it's going to um, phosphorylate this PRAS40 protein. And when PRAS40 gets phosphorylated, it cleaves off the mTORC complex, uh, mTORC1, basically. So it cleaves off Raptor, and basically it was stopping Raptor from being able to interact with its substrates, basically. So, by uh, cleaving off PRAS40, you activate the mTORC1, uh, basically. Okay, right. So, now, this mTORC1 is going to become active, basically. Okay, so mTORC1 has become activated. And what it's going to now do is um, it's going to increase uh, transcription and translation of proteins, basically. So transcription is going to go up and translation is going to go up. Now, why would you need transcription and translation to go up? Well, basically, they go up when the cell moves from the interphase of the cell cycle to the G1 phase. So let me just give you a brief um uh, a brief reminder of the uh, cell cycle then. So I need another piece of paper. Right. Okay, so. Okay, right. So, um, the cell cycle then. So, the cell cycle is the process by which one cell divides into two cells, basically. So it can go into two cells like this. And Basically, it consists of five phases, I think, uh, and the longest one by far is this interphase. And basically, it's just the phase between divisions. So it's the, it's the phase when the cell is just not dividing. It's quiescent. It's just doing whatever it does when it doesn't divide, basically. So interphase is this long period whilst the cell is just not dividing. Okay, and now, if you want it to go from interphase to actually get ready to divide. So let's say this cell at the moment is in interphase. If we want to actually get it to begin the process of cell division, then what has to happen 
is you have to begin what's known as the G1 phase, or the growth 1 phase, also sometimes referred to as the gap 1 phase. So this is the first growth phase. And basically, this is the phase where you produce a huge number of proteins. And what's the reason? Well, basically, if you're going to go from being one cell to being two cells, you need to basically double the amount of protein you have, because um, everything needs to be copied. If, this, if both of these cells are going to be functional, then all of the proteins that these two cells have need to have come from this original cell. So it needs to produce a lot of new protein, basically, uh, if it's going to split into two. So this is the first growth phase. In addition to producing proteins that are actually going to be needed by the two daughter cells, you also need to produce the proteins which are actually going to copy the DNA. So you need to make all the enzymes that are going to be associated with uh, copying the DNA, basically. Okay, so that's one of the main things that you could summarize G1 phase as. You need to produce the enzymes which are going to copy the DNA or replicate the DNA produce enzymes to copy DNA. Okay, right. Uh, so that's the first growth or first gap phase. Then what you have is a phase known as the S phase, which stands for synthesis phase. Now this is the phase where you actually copy the DNA. So this is where you replicate uh, your DNA. Okay, and there is rigorous checkpoints between the G1 phase and the S phase, controlled by the retinoblastoma protein. Okay, so what colour should I do S phase in? So basically, in G1 phase, you get all of the enzymes ready that you're going to use to copy the DNA, but they don't actually start doing it. So um, it, we might show, I might show DNA here, okay? And in G1 phase, you're getting all of the enzymes ready, basically, to um, copy the DNA, but they don't actually begin. To begin, there is a really rigorous checkpoint that has to be passed, this so-called G1S checkpoint. So basically, some of the proteins that are needed to actually, um, actually proceed into um, actually replicating the DNA are not produced until the exact last moment. And as soon as you produce those final ones, then the process can begin. Uh, but that, that checkpoint, that point of producing the final things that are necessary to begin uh, DNA replication, that's controlled very rigorously, and that's called the G1S checkpoint. Okay, so in S phase, you actually copy the DNA. So I'll draw the DNA now copied. So we've got two strands of DNA. So you get the DNA and you copy it, you replicate it, and you've now got double the amount of genetic material in the cell. But the cell has not divided yet. It hasn't even split the nucleus. All it is at the moment is a cell. I'll draw this. Here's the cell with a nucleus that has twice as much genetic material as it should have, basically. Okay, so that's where we are at the moment. Now you go through what's known as the second growth phase. So this is G2, or the second growth phase. Now this is where you produce more of the proteins that you're going to need in order for, to have, well, which the daughter two, both of the daughter two cells are going to need. So you're producing more protein because, you know, you're going about to split in two. So you need double the amount of protein. Also, you produce the proteins that are actually necessary in order to split the cell in two. So, to actually pull the cell apart into two, um, firstly, what you have to do is split the nucleus in two. That's the process of mitosis. So, first, the nucleus has to be pulled apart into two, and the genetic material has to be split in half. Okay, and uh, secondly, you then actually have to pull the whole cell apart, the process of cytokinesis, and that requires a bunch of enzymes as well. So you're going to have to have a huge number of proteins in order to perform both of those roles, and in the G2 phase, you're going to produce those proteins, basically. So what colour should I colour G2 in? So in G1 and GS, you produce the proteins needed for both of the daughter cells, basically. In G2 you will specifically produce the proteins that are needed to uh, split the nucleus and split the um, cell, basically. So, proteins needed for mitosis and cytokinesis. Proteins needed for 
mitosis and cytokinesis. Okay, right. So you get ready, basically, to actually divide the nucleus and then to divide the cell. Okay, and then there's a final phase, which should really be split into two pieces, but is usually quoted as one. So this is the M phase, standing for the mitosis phase. But, really, what you have is two bits. So I'll split it into two. Um, so the first bit you have is uh, mitosis, basically, which is where you actually split the nucleus into, uh, sorry, into two, yes. So you split the nucleus and uh, you've copied the genetic material, so half of that copied genetic material goes in one nucleus and the other half goes in the second nucleus. So this is mitosis here, okay? And then also in the end phase, right at the end, once you've got a cell that now has two nuclei, and each of those nuclei has the normal amount of genetic material in, okay, but the cell at the moment has two of them in, you then have the process of cytokinesis, which is the process by which the cell actually splits in two. So that's cellular division, so you actually now have two cells, like so. Okay, so this is cytokinesis. So basically, if you increase transcription and translation, basically, you are getting ready, you are going from interphase to G1 phase, you're going to start making all the proteins that the two daughter cells are going to need, and you're also going to start uh, making the proteins associated with replication of the DNA. So, the activation of the, um, where have I got it now, the application of the, um, the, of the, uh, the activation, sorry, of the mTORC1 is going to lead to the pushing of this cell from uh, the interphase into uh, the uh, G1 phase. And I just want to say why it's called a cell cycle, because these two daughter cells are then going to go back into interphase. That's why it's called the cell cycle. So this is the cell cycle. Okay, so that is the, um, is the PI3 kinase AKT mTOR pathway and how it promotes growth in the cell. And a huge number of the proteins, pretty much every protein in this pathway can be mutated and it can either, uh, and it, you know, it can lead to cancer.